Good morning, Dirt Road Believers. This is Tina. It may not be morning for you, but it is for me when I'm filming this. So I'm so glad that you're with me. We are still journaling through June. And so today I want to share with you something that is in my journal. This is my journal. And we got to June the 1st of this year and my mind was on summer. My mind was on, I'm turning another year older. And my kids came to me like right when they woke up and said, did you know that June is pride month? And I really hadn't thought about it, but you would have to be living under a rock if you haven't noticed um, that it is pride month. And there are, every time you turn on the TV, every time you go into a store, we are made aware that it is Pride Month. And one of the things that I do in my journal, because God says, if you want wisdom, ask me. So I jot down a lot of questions that I have for God in my journal and things that I want him to explain to me. And so this journal entry starts, God, help me to understand, gain wisdom and perspective on the whole pride movement. And I fear that too often Christians hastily, you know, we um, give our opinions and a very emotional response to the pride movement. And um, I don't know where that's really gotten us, but I want to ask God, God, please teach me about this. Teach me my place in all this because Proverbs 4.23 says, Out of the heart every issue flows. And there is not an issue in God's Word that He has not addressed. No matter how difficult um, it is to process through, it is in here. And so God was so good to answer my question and to give me perspective um you know jesus he walked this earth and he spoke only a hundred percent of god's truth and he did it in truth and in love and god's word moved him to move in closer to people who needed him to people who were in sin he didn't ask ahead of time hey um how you know where are you on your salvation or you know your sinfulness before he cared for before he fed before he healed people he he used god's word as a way it fueled him to move closer to those who needed him um he did not use it as a barrier and sometimes I feel like our initial response as Christians is to just put up a barrier and it becomes us and them. I don't like us and them. God sent his son Jesus to die for mankind. He loves all mankind and as long as there is a breath in us, his redemption is um, for the taking. And so I want to get into this issue today. Um, so no matter where you are, um, you know, whether you are a part of the pride movement, whether you are um, a Christian and against the pride movement, whether you are a Christian and you are an ally of the pride movement, um, there is something in God's word for you today. So I hope that you will stick around and um, listen to what God has to say about it. All right. Journaling through June. That was a long intro, but devotion coming soon. Um, we are journaling through June. So every, um, every devotion in June, we are giving away a beautiful journal. Please keep in mind that if you entered to win last week, those winners will be announced the last Tuesday of June, just because of how our travel schedule works this summer. But the one that we're giving away today is be still and know that I am God. It's beautiful. It's pink and it is just waiting for you to write upon its pages um, all the things that's go that are going on in your walk, in your faith. Um, also, we're giving away a t-shirt each week. So we gave this one away last week. The original, this is the OG Dirt Road Believer logo. We're giving this one away again. So to enter to win the journal, simply comment either on YouTube or Facebook journal and then if you want to enter to win the t-shirt it'll be on plain white but it looks really good um then enter to then just uh comment t-shirt and you'll be entered to win that all right that's it for my intro except for i'm going to show you a sweet little video you know we went to orlando and um my middle son you know the middle child often gets overlooked and all my sweet 
middle child wanted to do was go to Hollywood Studios and he had his mind fixed on um, building his own droid. So that's what we did um, in the Star Wars world. And um, so I'm going to show you that and then we will be back for today's devotion. Hey family! Having such a great time. We're going to stay till close tonight, aren't we? I'm down. I'm down. It was crazy to me when we stepped in um, the Star Wars land. It was this total immersive experience. You felt, I mean, I felt like Princess Leia or something. It was crazy. And in our world today, you can immerse yourself in anything you want to. You know, if you want to learn Klingon and go to the Star Trek conventions, you can do that. I got corrected because there was all this funny writing in the Star Wars world and they, I said it was Klingon. Oh, I was reprimanded because that's Star Trek, not Star Wars. But um, as Christians, where do we immerse ourselves? Are we immersing ourselves in the, uh, you know, political rhetoric? Are we immersing ourselves in what's on the headlines or in the news? Or are we immersing ourselves in the Word of God? And as I said, out of the heart, every issue flows, every issue of life. And so there is nothing that God shies away from addressing in His Word. And so today we are going to look at um, how He answered my question, um, which was, God, will you help me understand? Help me understand. So the first scripture that He gave me was Jeremiah 48. 
and I'm not going to read all of it, but this is what stood out to me in verse 29, um, starting in verse 29. Um, assume that Moab is the pride movement. We have heard of Moab's pride, great pride indeed. His insolence, arrogance, pride, and haughty heart. I know his outburst. This is the Lord's declaration. It is empty. He, his boast is empty. Therefore, I will wail over Moab. I will cry out for Moab, all of it. He will moan for the men. I will weep for you, vine of Sibma, with more weeping than Jazar. Your tendrils have extended to the sea. They have reached to the sea and to Jazer. The destroyer has fallen on your summer fruit and grape harvest. Gladness and celebration are taken from the fertile field and from the land of Moab. I have stopped the flow of wine from the wine press. No one will tread with shouts of joy. The shouting is not a shout of joy. And then in the end of verse 45, it declares um, this Moab as noisemakers. And then here is what I love so much. In verse 47, God says, Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in the last days. This is the Lord's declaration. The judgment on Moab ends here. God's final vision is redemption. So if there is a side that I'm choosing, I am on the side of truth. I am on the side of redemption. My heart um, breaks because I see pride, 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 and I see emptiness. And then God showed me in um, Ezekiel, this is chapter 16. This really just, to me, it defines the pride movement. So I'm not going to read all of it, but um, chapter 16 begins um, about um, someone at birth. And all through their growing up, um, God was there. And he describes when you thought no one cared about you, I cared about you. But then they come to an age where they realize their beauty, their, um, they feel autonomous. And beginning in verse 15, it says, But you trusted in your beauty and acted like a prostitute because of your fame. You lavished your sexual favor on everyone who passed by. Your beauty became his. You took some of your clothing and made colorful high places for yourself. Do you hear that? made colorful high places flag rainbow flags flying everywhere pride flags flying everywhere our clothes the clothing also represents those colorful high places and you engaged in prostitution these places should not have been built and this should never have happened you also took your beautiful jewelry made from the gold and silver I had given you, and you made male images so that you could engage in prostitution with them. Then you took your embroidered clothing to cover them and set my oil and incense before them. The food that I gave you, the fine flour, oil, and honey that I fed you, you set it before them as a pleasing aroma. This is what happened. This is the declaration of the Lord. And so all of um, the gifting, the blessing that God has given, it begins to be offered up to this movement, this pride movement. Um, and the description further goes on to say, you even took your sons and daughters who you bore to me and sacrificed them to these images as food. You know, I walked into Target and the first thing I saw was a pride clothing section. And there in the pride clothing section was a pride onesie, size zero to three months. This is exactly what I'm reading. You even took your sons and daughters you bore to me and you sacrificed them. We are, um, I say we, um, society is willingly giving over our children to the pride movement, this um, idol that has become the image of the rainbow. It, we are sacrificing our children to it, not even giving them a choice, but raising them as if it is, you know, okay. 
Wasn't your prostitution enough? You slaughtered my children and gave them up when you passed them through the fire images. In all your detestable practices and acts of prostitution, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were stark naked and thrashing around in your blood. Then, after all your evil, woe to you, the declaration of the Lord God. You built yourself a mound and made yourself an elevated place in every square of every street. And if that doesn't describe the pride movement on in every high place in this earth, we, we see um, pride elevated. Um, you turned your beauty into a detestable thing. You spread your legs to everyone who passed by and increased your prostitution. You engaged in promiscuous acts with Egyptian men, your well-endowed neighbors, and increased your prostitution to anger me. Therefore, I stretched out my hand against you and reduced your provisions. I gave you over to the desire of those who hate you, the Philistine women, who were embarrassed by your indecent conduct. Then you engaged in prostitution with Assyrian men because you were not satisfied. Even though you did this with them, you were still not satisfied. So you extended your prostitution to Chaldea, the land of merchants, but you were not even satisfied with this. And I, I look at this, you know, it's never enough. We never have enough people to join this movement. We, we keep extending L, G, let's add B, T, L, G, is that right? L, G, B, T, Q. We just keep adding and extending because it's never enough. The, the pride is never satisfied. That's part of the definition of pride, isn't it? You get one thing and then you just want more and more and more. And guys, here's where I went to bed one night and I asked God this because the whole the whole um, thing has been called love. You know, look at the shirts. Love is love. Love is universal. Love. How can you argue with love? God is love, right? And I think that's a hang up for a lot of people. And and I asked God, how do you how do you argue with love? And he woke me up in the middle of the night and he said, it's not love, it's lust. And he wasn't just talking about sexual lust either. This next verse says in verse 30, how your heart was inflamed with lust, the declaration of the Lord. And guys, lust for what? Lust for the flesh wants what it wants over what? God commands for us. Lust for identities that we create over the identity rooted in the nature of God. Lust for money. Guys, uh, pay attention. This is an industry, okay? There are, you know, over $350 million revenue in the pride industry. The average salary for people who work in the pride industry is $118,000 a year with an average bonus of $13,000. Now, this was a quick Google search. I did not, you know, I did not spend a lot of time on those numbers. There is a reason that every um, major company network has taken on the pride logo it's because it makes them money the pride movement is not about love not as God designed it it is a movement of lust and how do we know that the pride movement is lust and not love because in the love chapter the scriptures teach us in 1st Corinthians 13 in verse 6 it says love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Although that is what the Word of God calls it, it's lust, not love. We can't use that word, Christians, as an excuse to throw up barriers and say, oh, well, because I'm telling you, um, God has taught me so much. And when I, when I look at um, people who are, you know, totally immersed in the pride movement. And I look at media and I look at, you know, kids. I'm a teacher and I, and I see kids being given over to this movement and, and having total buy-in. My heart breaks. And instead of, oh, I, you know, you're over there, I'm over here. No, I want to, I want to be 
like Jesus. I want to move closer. I want to, because if there is redemption, then where is it going to come from? It's going to come from the Word of God. And who is going to share that? We are Christians. And so, I mean, I, I know so many people who are a part of this movement and who are allies with this movement. And I love them. I adore them as people. And so let's move in closer so that we can be a part of the redemption that God wants so desperately for them. Um, and I want to end with this. And this is um, a verse for Christians who have... Um, who are allies? I think that's what that's the term that I've heard. I'm an ally. I may not be um, LGBTQ. I may not be a part of that community, but I support the pride movement. And I think a lot of Christians out of um, it's easier. It's, um, you know, you get a lot less flack and you get the approval of man. Um, you know, you, you just support and ally and you don't speak out against or you don't, um, you just go along with it. Um, I want to read to you, this is Ezekiel 31, 17, and I think this perfectly describes um, those allies. In verse, this is 31, starting in verse 17, it says, They too descended with it to Shoal, to those slain by the sword. As its allies, they lived in its shade among the nations and so if you're not a part of the movement but you're living in its shade and you're okay with it and you go along with it um, it's only bringing you down we have to be accountable to God not to man and so living by this word and guys I'm gonna end with this I recently saw somebody post um, this is this is Christian month or something, and we're going to reclaim the rainbow. Um, we don't need to reclaim the rainbow. It's God's rainbow. It always has been, and it always will be. And Charles Spurgeon said this. You know, I love me some Charles Spurgeon. He said, God's rainbow is hung over the cloud of our sins and sorrows to announce deliverance. And so when I see these rainbows everywhere, um, and I am reminded every time I look around that this is Pride Month, I see that rainbow and I say, God, if, if this can be turned around, you can do it. And I believe you for that. And so um, let's announce the deliverance that our God has in store, guys. Um, thank you for being with me today. If you feel like God has taken you to the woodshed today, he has. I know he has been taking me to the woodshed, but scripture tells us that God disciplines those that he loves. Everything in scripture is not easy. And trust me, there are certain parts of scripture I wish I could go, blah, 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 blah. but that's not how the inerrant word of God works. We are to calibrate every part of our life to his word. And guys, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me for this difficult topic today. Um, it was not easy, but thanks for hanging in there. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, be sure to like this video, um, share it. And if you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Please remember if you want to enter to win the pink journal, simply comment journal. If you want to enter to win the um, t-shirt, then just comment t-shirt the last two giveaways the last two weeks will be announced next tuesday so guys hope you have a wonderful wonderful day and as always until next time slow down take the dirt road believe it